Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Hello Bluebird Meadow Bunnies and the Pathway background. I'm actually going to be splitting this video into two parts because it was quite long. So in part one, I will just be coloring the background. So I will set the bunny panel aside for part two so that we can concentrate on this big, beautiful background for part one. So what I love about this image is that it's nice and big. It's six by six. So you can stamp it on a card front in several different orientations and get a different look. I stamped mine in the landscape orientation today. And I have also tucked a piece of plain white cardstock underneath so that I can color right up to the edge and not worry about getting any marker on my work surface. So I'm starting with the sky that is behind this big, huge cloud that takes up quite a lot of our background. And for the sky, I'm using B41 and B45. I started with the B41 and just colored that part in solid. And then I'm going to come in with the B45 and add just a little bit of shading down toward the bottom of that cloud. So I'm just going to brush a little bit of that color on using a flicking motion and then pull that color up with the B41 and let that fade into the rest of the sky. So a lot of people might take a look at one of these backgrounds and just see so many things to color and get overwhelmed, but it really is easy to do if you just break it down into steps. Now, just because it's easy doesn't mean it's going to be quick. Like I said, this did take me quite a lot of time. This full length video was over an hour long, which is why I decided to break it into two parts. But also I thought it might be beneficial to you as a viewer to have it in two parts so that if you want to just follow along and color with me as I do the background and then use it for different images, you can do that as well. So right now I'm taking BG000 and just swiping some color across the lines that the artist has drawn on that cloudy background to give it some definition. And then I'm going to go over that with the BG10 and just darken that up in a few places. You'll notice that I'm holding my marker very loosely and I'm holding it far back on the barrel so that I get a nice flow as I'm swiping in this color. And then I went back to my BG000 and just went over the edges of that to soften it back up. To help some of those lines fade into the white of the rest of the cloud, I'm going to go over the edge with the colorless blender, just again swiping to get that nice soft transition. Then I'm going to move on to the leaves of my tree. I'm just working from the top down in this scene today. So I'm using YG11 to just get some color on that tree. Now normally you guys know that I color darkest to lightest, but with these backgrounds, I find that they're less intimidating if you get some color down um, right away. So you'll notice that it almost looks like half of this background is colored in already just because I've swiped on a few colors. So now I'm going to go in and add some extra definition to that treetop by dotting in some YG13. I thought that I would do this stippling effect to kind of give some different highlights and lowlights to the leaves so that the light can really be playing across the surface of those leaves and just um, casting some different shadows and light. Then I'm going to darken that up with the YG17 and I'm sticking close to the bottom right hand side of all of these little areas so that I do get some nice shadows and leave some areas that are going to be much lighter where the sun would be casting um, its light from the left hand side, the top left there. Now, in order for an object to really look light, you need to have a lot of contrast to show that off. And so I'm going to add in some G46. If you watched my recent Lawn Fawn video with the little frogs, I used this combo on that video for them. Um, this is a new to me combo. These markers are a recent purchase, but I'm really loving how they play together. I think the G46 is such a natural combination with the YG11, 13, and 17. 
It has a tiny bit of a blue tone to it, which really complements the yellow tones of the other markers. So now I'm going to go back to my YG13 and start to dot a little bit more and just work my way back in the reverse order. I decided to skip the YG17 since I had used it so recently and just go back to my lightest two shades to really brighten up those lighter areas. And once I finish up the treetop, I will use just the YG 11, 13, and 17 to color in the few little leaves that are falling down. For the tree trunk, I'm going to coat the entire area with the E51. This is going to be the lightest color in the combination that I'll be using. And like I said, it just helps it feel a little less intimidating by having some color already on there. So once I have the E51 laid in, I'm going to bring in my other shades. I'm going to use quite a few on this tree because it has a lot of little swirls and stuff, and I really want to create some nice depth. So I'm adding in the E53, E55, E57, and E59. And now I'm jumping straight into my E59. So I want to create some shadow under the leafy tree top. That would be casting a shadow up toward the top part of that stump. I also want to have a shadow on the underside of the limb that is extending out. And from there, I'm just going to follow the lines that the artist has drawn so that I can make these little lines look like they're kind of etched into the tree, like that bark is really gnarly and just has lots of texture to it. So once I have that all lined in with the E59, I'm going to grab my E57 and just go right over the edge of that E59, just pulling that color out a bit so that we will have some nice blends. I love the way the artist has drawn this tree because it makes it so easy to know where to put your dark colors and your light colors just by following those lines that have been drawn on there. So I'm just going to continue swirling that cover right over the edge of the E59. I'm not being too precise about it because I want there to be some texture. This is wood and um, so bark is rough so it doesn't really need to be nice and smooth like you would want you know maybe fur to be um, so it's okay if it's a little bit streaky looking it actually adds to the texture of the tree and it just makes it look even better so now i'm using the e55 and i'm going right over the edge of the e57 just pulling that color leaving some little areas in there for the lighter shades so that it'll look bumped out. So if you want something to look like it's been pushed out, that should be where the light is hitting it, because the sun would be able to reach those areas. And then the darker areas are the crevices where the sun can't really reach. So now I'm using the E53 and just kind of blending over almost everything else that remains. I just left a few little tiny areas um, right at the top of that limb and then right on the left and right side for that E51 so it looks nice and round. Moving on to the bush, I'm going to use YG21, YG23, and YG25. First, giving it a coat of the YG21. I wanted it to be a different green from the leaves on the tree since it would not be the same plant. So that just makes sense to have it be a little bit of a different shade. But I still wanted something nice and bright, so I did go with another yellow-green combo. Again, just like with the treetop, I'm going to stipple in the mid-tone, which is the YG23, and this time I'm working from the bottom right and getting softer and letting those dots get smaller and less frequent as I go towards the top left. So then I'm going to come in with the YG25 and continue just adding those little dark spots that are going to give it the depth that I'm looking for. I think this bush would be so much fun to also do 
um, like you could do like a blueberry bush and have like maybe some bluish purple dots or something like that. Or you could do like um, a different color, like a yellow dot or a pink dot to make it look like a flowering bush. I think that would be really pretty too. So I wanted another darker green that had a little bit of a blue tone to represent shadows. So after consulting my Copic color chart, I decided to go with G07. And I think this complemented those yellow greens well, just like the um, treetop color. So I just added a few dots of that G07 again toward the bottom, being more sparing even than the other shades, just so I can have um, that bit of contrast that is going to really make those lighter areas pop. And then once I have that G07 laid in, I'm just going to work my way back down again. Um, I'm going to skip the YG25 just like I did up above, skipping the uh, second darkest shade and just going straight in with the YG23. And then I'll also add in some dots with the YG21 just to really bring that yellow uh, green shade front and center and give you that nice pop that that color gives. For the grass, I'm going to switch it up again just so that I have some nice separation between the different greens on this card. So now I'm using YG03 and I'm doing a full layer onto the grassy areas. Now I debated about whether or not to do the pathway as grass as well. That is definitely an option. I ended up deciding to leave it as a path just so I could show you guys what that looks like, how the stamp was originally intended to be used. And I am going straight over the leaves of the plant that's in the bottom right corner because I can just color those with a darker green later on. Then I'm going to add some shadows on the hillsides with the YG17. So I'm just pulling in some streaks of that darker color, doing a few from the left and a few from the right and making sure that there's some separation between them so it's not too close together. And then I'll do the same on the bottom area, just kind of sweeping in a arc to follow the shape of the hills that are already there. Just doing a few little streaks here and there. And then I'm going to go back to my YG03 and start to blend over that. I'm going to leave some areas with just that single layer of the YG03 as well to create some more depth and some more light areas. Um, so I'm just using these two shades, but it's going to have a nice varied look um, because I'm doing this kind of sweeping motion. I'm also coloring completely over the little rocks that are down at the um, kind of the bottom left of that first hill because I'm actually going to have one of my bunnies laying there and I didn't want him to be laying his head on some bumpy rocks. So by coloring them green and having him kind of covering most of that area, um, you, it won't be as noticeable. Also, if you wanted to, you could just take a baby wipe or something and wipe off the ink of that area before you stamp down if you needed to remove those rocks. But because of the placement of where I had him, I knew it would be okay to just color them green and have it just look like part of the grass when I get done. For the pathway, I'm starting out with the E40 and doing a solid layer. And then I'll also be using E41 and E42. I'll grab that E42 and also do some little streaks to create some shadows so that, it, you know, the ground isn't perfectly even. Um, maybe it's been worn down by foot traffic and by the rain. And so it has some little uh, divots in it. So I'm just sweeping that color on with the E42 and then blending it out with the E41. And then I'll go back to my E42 and sweep a little bit more of that shadow color on since it got pushed back a little bit. With things like this, I do like to start lighter and uh, just build my color as I go, especially for things like this large background that's kind of new to me. I'm also going to add a little texture with some little pebbles along the sides of the pathway with the E42. 
and I wanted to deepen that up so I did also add in the E43. Now unfortunately my E43 is going to leak on me in a couple of seconds so I will just go back over this pathway um, with another layer to just deepen it up and eliminate that little blob in the final card you can't even see it. So this is just about the end of this video. I hope you'll stay tuned for part two. As I mentioned, they'll both be going live at the same time, so you can roll right into part two if you'd like. Um, and I'll be showing you how to color bunnies in three different ways and putting the card together. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and maybe you'll even come back and watch it again and color along with me. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Your support means the world. You can also ring that notification bell if you want to be sure that my videos always end up in your feed. And here are two extra videos in case you'd like to keep watching. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.